Welcome back to The Issue. I'm Mark Carr with uh, my co-host Corey Judson and now we're going to talk about um, Uber and I thought the best person to get on the show to talk about Uber was somebody who doesn't have <laughs> anything to do with Uber and that's Scott Wallace uh, from Burlington Taxi. So th thanks for agreeing to, uh, to come on, Scott. Well, thanks for having me on, Mark. You, sure. you said that uh, uh, this is what you talk about quite a bit uh, these days. Uh, pretty much 24 seven. I go to bed talking about it with my wife and I wake up in the morning and I get phone calls about it the next day. <laughs> so right? it's constantly something we talk about. Yeah, yeah. well, tell us how, how has uh, Uber uh, affected your business? Well, it's, it, it's affected, it, it's the same trend everywhere since they started in 2009, I believe, in San Francisco. So every city you'll find the same thing happens. They start taking some night business away, uh, weekend night business, because a lot of it's, you know, some part-time, some full-time, but most of the people will start working on the weekend nights, and that's when the, the busy times are. Yeah. Right, so that especially Friday and Saturday nights, they really take a lot of that business away. So they've, you know, in on the weekend nights, they take about 35% of our business now. Um, mm -hmm. Wow. And during the week, you know, 10% during the weeknights and very little during the daytime. Wow. But so, still, you know, at the end, end of the day, it's about 20% of your business, yeah, right away, right? So it's hard to compete against companies that do what they do. Absolutely. And you say, like, those weekend times, those evening, that's your busy time, right? That's, well, that's when, a busy that's time. That's when you make your money. Yeah, that's, right? that's well, y it, it is. And it's always been historically a problem. The industry has always had a problem fulfilling that Friday and Saturday night. So, right. I mean, to give you an example, you know, at 11 o'clock on a Saturday night, we would do 100 calls an hour. Right. By 2 a.m., we would do 400 calls in an hour. Right. And by 3 a.m., we would do 30 calls in an hour. So we always had this huge spike that this demand we could never fulfill. Right. So it was difficult, right? Yes. So people, you know, would complain, and right. you know, the, it, this is kind of where it all started from. I think is okay. this, this whole business. Uber thought they were filling a niche, perhaps, and uh, um, yeah, I think they, they they thought they were filling a niche. That that was part of it, right? right. And it just snowballed into what it is today. Right. Okay. How? Uh, but you are regulated uh, by the city or or towns, depending on on where you are in Halton. Um, are they regulated at all? No, they have no regulations. I mean, it, oh, let me rephrase that. Just recently, they've been regulated in some towns like Toronto, town cities like Toronto, Ottawa, uh, Quebec is just more or less regulated, they're still arguing that out. Hamilton just the other day just regulated them. Um, they've been around here for about two and a half, three years, uh, totally unregulated. So when they move in, they just keep working. Cities tell them you gotta stop. Well, we look into your business and figure out a way to... To, to, to monetize to, to, it. To, well, to adapt <laughs> it into, in, into to make it work for everyone. Yeah. And they said no, right? So the city of Toronto at one point a few years ago said, you know, you need to cease and desist. And they said, no, we're not going to. So it's, it's always been interesting. They've become the bully in the room. I mean, they've become yeah. bigger than governments. So they're now telling the government what they should do. And that's how they're working today. Well, it's like, it's, and, and it's interesting that you should, should, uh, should say that because it, it is internet-based. And another uh, company that's internet-based is Netflix, 600 million yeah. uh, a year, and they don't pay a dime in taxes. Well, that's changing uh, now, though. Well, Hopefully. supposedly, supposedly. Um, so, uh, and, and it's not just just a matter of, of revenue, but uh, for example, uh, you're you're covered by fully insured and, yeah, and I mean, so on. There's, there's really, I mean, it needs to be clear with people. There's four, the, you know, there's there's Uber Black, Uber Taxi, Uber, a whole bunch of different Ubers, all kinds yeah. of Uber Carpool, whatever. It's, no one's complaining about that. That that's fine. It's Uber X is what the problem is. So Uber X is their low end service. So it's anybody and his brother. I mean, you basically sign up in your pajamas and you're on the road the next day. That's how their business model works. And you know, for us, there's four issues that have to be dealt with. Um, insurance is one of them. They're starting to get a handle on the insurance for the first two years and in, in three years in Canada. They had no insurance whatsoever, but they would tell everybody they did, but they never had any. And finally even though government's saying you gotta stop because you have no insurance, they would say, we do, we're covered, and the government would come back, no you're not, and they would say, yeah we are, and this debate would go on for two, three years. Finally, they made a deal with Intact to try and cover drivers, but they're still not fully covered. So drivers think they're covered, but they're not fully covered. The government's letting them get away with it at this point. That's one of their issues. And when, excuse me, just saying, when they aren't covered, that means me riding in the back seat Right. is not covered. Right. Yeah, what happens is you sign up for Uber today, 
you have um, you know, general insurance company, and they'll say, you should tell your insurance company that you're driving for Uber, because when you- Business insurance as opposed to? Right, that's right. I pay about seven grand a year for insurance per car. Right um, in a taxi business, and these guys are trying to get away with, you know, they, trying to get away with telling people they have proper insurance, and people believe it. They're they're relying on naive drivers to go out there and, you know, and, and put everything at risk. You know, put their house at risk, put their car at risk. You know, put everything they own at risk for the sake of Uber. You know, and to make seven eight dollars an hour. It's, it's, it's unbelievable to us. But the bigger, you know, th th there's, there's still bigger issues, and, and, and that's, you know, obviously a major one, and it's, you know, people in the back of the car have to be cautious of that, but the biggest issue really becomes taxes. Uh, you know, in Canada, all taxis have to charge HST. So Uber charges no HST, um, and mm -hmm. just like Netflix, they continue to get away with it. They say we're a technology company, it's up to our drivers, but the drivers can't collect it because they don't collect any cash. It's all done by credit card, so the driver has no control of the money. Yeah. Right? Well, it's, it, it, it's interesting that you should bring that up because we've got a caller on the, on the line who wants to talk about, uh, about that specifically. Uh, so, caller, are you, are you there? Linda? Hello, Linda. Hi. Thanks for placing the call. And your question is what? Uh, my question is, why does Uber not charge HST? Why does Uber charge HST? Well, and that's, that's the question we're all asking, right? Um, Uber tries to claim that their drivers are independent contractors, so it's up to them to charge HST. Uh, it's a gray area. It's not really, you know, they're not really independent contracts because Uber controls, you know, whether you know, they can fire and hire them. They could, um, they control the wage or the the amount of money that's charged. So the driver has no control over that. And with taxis, we have to charge agent. We have no choice. Mm -hmm. So Uber is getting away with playing in a gray area that's everybody knows is not right. Very similar to what Netflix has been doing. You know, basically coming here and renting movie, making money off taxpayers of Canada and taking all that money and not putting back it in the economy. And that's, the, you know, it's one of the bigger problems that we have. Like 28 cents of every dollar I make goes to paying taxes. So we're at the state now, we've been asking our MPs, our MPPs and the governments, you know, across Canada to say, listen, they have to do something about this. We can't continue to pay taxes and compete. We all talk about a level playing field and everybody says, oh, you guys are just complaining because you have competition. It's not about competition. We're happy to have the competition, but They've got to pay their fair, pay, fair share of taxes, or we don't. So recently, you know, we've had our accountants and lawyers and everybody looking at it. So now we have to go. And really, what's happening here is the government of Canada is telling us that you have to go to a non-tax-paying type business, which is crazy. I mean, I pay millions of dollars in taxes every year, but in order to compete, I have to do what they do. Because you can't get them to pay taxes. Right. So yeah. we have no choice but to go and say, you know, it's back to the gray economy almost back in the 70s, right? So wow. it's the same kind of concept. And so they're saying, you know, you can't charge, I mean, you have to charge HST. And we're saying, well, you rather have to make them pay or we're not going to pay. So what's happening now is companies will start going like an Uber. And they'll just say, okay, well, we're going to make up our rates, we're going to have surcharges, we're going to have to do all these different things that, that, that Uber does, right, and not pay the taxes, which we've been very open about and saying, that's not right. But for me to start losing, continue to lose business when everyone else is, you know, they're out there paying 28 cents less than I am for every dollar of his income. It's crazy. So, uh, go ahead. So, if, if I could, if I could play devil's advocate here, just sure. for a moment here. So, I, I get the the fairness piece, right? It's, there's no question. There's a lot of regulation of the taxi industry that that drives your costs up. That makes it very difficult to compete with Uber. That's not facing those same, you know, same costs. Um, at the same time, we, you know, when you talk to other young people, right? And generally, like they use Uber, they pick up their phone. It's easier. It's maybe a hip, a cool thing. How does the taxi industry adapt and change? You know, you know, if you know everything else being equal to compete with that model. Wait, well, we all have an app. Okay. We all have an app that does the same thing. The okay. Uber app is nothing. You yeah, know, they, 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 they weren't even the first ones to come out with an app like that, right? Okay. I mean, it's been tweaked, it's been modified, as technology's gotten better, everything's yeah. better. But, 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 but here's but my point. Though, have, you know, I can do the same thing with our cars right now. Oh, okay. Right? 
The difference is, I got to charge you taxes. Right. That's the only difference between me and them. Right. But so, if your dispatch was in Buffalo, mm -hmm. that's exactly what the game is going to be, right? So now it, it's it's going to the cloud. Everything's going to be in the cloud now, right? So the cloud is hosted, and you can go online and you can do why does Uber not pay taxes, and they'll give you the whole shell game, right? Like every corporation yeah. does. Right, every corporation does the same. You know, I say it does the same thing. Yeah. It's, it's it's similar, but you know, they all have you know they have a place in Amsterdam. Like their head office is in Amsterdam. Yeah. Right. It's not in the United States. It's not. In, it's in Amsterdam because that's where there's tax havens there. And I'm not an accountant, so I can't tell you how the whole structure works. But I can tell you that's what they do. So they say they're a technology company. We're not a dispatch company, which in our business is you know it's a little bit crazy. I mean, they do the exact same thing we do. Um, but governments let them get away. People love it. And you know, people love the fact that it's 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 convenient, and you know, it's great. But we all have the app, right? But it's cheap, and it's cheap for all kinds of reasons. But the main one is that it's they just don't pay taxes. Any taxes, right. right? So you know, and on top of that, you take into account you know the other parts of it are you know my drivers have to pay you know close to about five hundred dollars a year in fees to be a taxi driver. Mm -hmm. So we're losing drivers because you know we don't have that peak business anymore. So my part-time drivers are going away. Um, you know they're not going to Uber because with Uber, whatever they're going to tell you online, they can. You know we have drivers out there driving for Uber. Yeah. They're making six, seven dollars an hour, right? After expenses, most people don't take that in consideration, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no, you know, it's it's we call it the race to the bottom, and that's where everybody seems to be going now. You know, going underground and you know trying to find bodies in cars. So. Uh, um, one one of the things um, that I was wondering are your drivers considered employees or are they independent contractors? So my drivers. So I'm a bit I'm a bit unique. We're, we're always been very unique. my drivers always been employees forever. We liked it that, that way that because that pumps up your costs as it well. Pumps up our costs, which is fine, and that's not what we're debating here. It's not about whether I pay you know yeah. workers' comp and I pay right. EI yeah. and all the other things. Yeah. That's you know that's my business model decision, and that's fine. That would increase my cost by right. upwards of ten percent. Yeah. We're really talking about the HST part of this component. Okay. We're really talking about you know where I my drivers employ, so I take off their you know uh, their taxes. You know every we week we do all that kind of thing. So CPP again, but that's all going to go away. You know so you know and you're not talking when you talk about the cab industry in general. You know if Uber took all the cab business today. You could talk to to a billion dollar in taxes. They're going to just leave the country. Taxes that were collected, that will no longer be collected, right? And that's a lot of money, right? That that's just going to disappear. So, are are you looking for action on this because you're licensed municipally? Uh, but the big issue, as you say, is is federally and and I guess provincially as as well. What kind of action are you looking for from? Uh, any level of government. Well, from the from the federal and the provincial governments, we're looking for them to start, play, you know, being like every other every other company in Canada. Pay your fair share, charge well, HST, and pay how for do you it. Get them to pay. Well, are we just go and say we're not going to do it, mm -hmm. right? We go and play the same game, mm -hmm. and that's the only way we can do it, right? What else are we going to do now? Netflix, you know, the government moves slow; it's a slow pace. You know, they're going to make their billions before it. You know, they catch up to them finally, but you know. All we can do is, you know, stand up and say, "Hey, you can't keep doing this," which we've been doing for two, two and a half years now, and now we've said, "Okay, we're done. Like we are now going their route." So we have mm -hmm. to manipulate, play the gray areas, and we're telling CRA, we're telling everybody, "This is what we have to do. You're making this me do is this." What they're forcing because if I can't to. do that, if I have to pay taxes and they don't pay taxes, it's, it, it I could never survive. Right, so and, and there's other parts to it too. Um, you know, Doug was here earlier talking about transit. So accessibility. Interesting enough, uh, yesterday or last night, Hamilton just passed a bylaw or is passing a bylaw for Uber. It's all about Uber. They give them twenty twenty thousand dollars. Uber has to pay to not have wheelchair accessibility. So to not be wheelchair accessible. But if they aren't paying taxes. Why would they bother paying? Uh, a municipal. Well, the municipalities are licensing them, like Toronto has. Yeah. So they pay in Toronto. I the numbers are hundred thousand yeah. dollars a year and six cents a trip. 
And that seems to be the formula people are going with. So depending on the size of your city, you know, I think it's $50,000 a year they're paying um, in Hamilton. Mm -hmm. And then $20,000 not to be wheelchair accessible, not to have any wheelchair accessible vehicles. Which, when I, la when I looked at it, I was like, it's gotta be a joke. I mean, that's a mistake in the printing, right? But it wasn't. That's what they're looking at. Which, from a taxi, again, from a taxi perspective, by law, we have to be accessible. Right, absolutely. And Human Rights Act tells yeah. everybody I, they have no, to be know accessible. That, you know, yeah, churches everybody. and schools and hospitals, everything. Well, I have has a friend to. that, you know, he develops right. buildings and, right. and things like that. So he says, well, geez, I'll pay them and spell it 20 grand not to be accessible. <laughs> I mean, because right. he's going to save himself $100,000. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. it's crazy in this world. But it's amazing that Hamilton is saying, and, you know, of course, the cab companies are up in arms because they're saying, well, yeah. hang on a second. Right. I got to pay taxes. I have to put these wheelchair accessibility, and, and to put that in perspective, I spend out of my pocket about $35,000 a year subsidizing the wheelchair taxis in Burlington. Yeah. So they don't make money because it takes, you know, you have to load and unload, you have yeah, to strap yeah. people yeah. down, you have to get them in securely. Yeah. The vehicles are much more expensive, um, you know, they're $50,000 compared to $10,000 for a, right. yeah. a, a medium-sized used car. So, you know, it's an expensive venture, So, but we've always as being a community company, I always said, okay, well, it's part of what we do and part of giving back to community was, you know, subsidizing these vehicles. Mm -hmm. Well, again, we can no longer do these things. And the cab industry is slowly, you know, they're, they're coming off the road and they'll be returning their licenses in and saying, well, you deal with that municipality. Like, I can't just mm -hmm. continue to compete against a non-taxpaying company and then subsidize accessibility, which should be subsidized in some form or fashion. Like, you know, we were happy to do it for what well, we were operating, you know, paying taxes. And Uber wants to come in here and be Uber X and pay taxes. That's fantastic, you know, and put accessible vehicles in the road. That's great. Let's do it, right? But that's not, that doesn't fit their business models. Their, their famous line is it doesn't fit our business model, which the parliament in uh, Australia had said they stood up and they said, well, it doesn't fit my business model either, but I still have to pay taxes. So, you know, that's just the way, and it's amazing they can get away with these things. So, you know, the cab industry is kind of, you know, stepping up a little bit and, and saying, okay, well, time's up. We've tried. We thought it would be, you know, we thought, you know, s the governments would see this happening and understand and, and do something about it. But, but everybody's just, people love it, I get it. I get why the kids love it, I get why people use it, you know? I mean, my son has a tutor. And two days ago, we were at a tutor, and so we said to the girl, do you need a ride home? She goes, oh no, I'm calling an Uber. <laughs> and of course, my son says, you know what we Did do here, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, she's a young girl, she's, right. you know, I don't right. know, 17 or whatever yeah. she is, but, um, you know, it, I, I understand it, I understand the technology is convenience, but everybody has it. Right. You know, the cab industry has that it. That convenience translates into uh, no taxes and and all the negative things that are going to affect the uh, the country and individuals eventually. Right, and you know, I don't know how much time we have, but you know, the other day I had a uh, on our Facebook page, someone wrote, "Why would anybody take a taxi? Uber so much cheaper." So we've always responded to all those comments and said, you know, listen, I, I put the analogy of bar A and bar B. Mm -hmm. They're across the street from Metro, they're on Brand Street. One pays, you know, you know, he follows liquor control rules, he pays corkage fee, which is the, the yeah. fees for booze. Right. Um, he charges HST and his food and his booze, right? And he, he deals with the fire code, so he only has 100 people, whatever his, his limit is. Bar B across the street. Makes it, his restaurant uh, accessible. Right. Makes his restaurant accessible, exactly. Bar B across the street does none of that. Doesn't pay taxes, doesn't follow any liquor codes, doesn't pay corkage fees. Everybody go there. I would go there. You know, beer is going to be a, you know, $1.50, right? The other guy's going to be $6. But is that, is that fair? And everybody says, well, you guys just don't like competition. It's not competition, it's just it's unfair competition. Yeah. So if you know, if the government wants us to go underground, and that's really what we're doing, we're playing gray areas of independent contractors, which they're really not, yeah. and, and you know, make it be, you know, uh, saying that you've got to be HST, so you sign, up, you sign up tomorrow, you sign up tonight with Uber, and by tomorrow you're an Uber driver. How do you become an independent contractor in 24 hours? You know, how do you become HST, right? Then they say to you, well, here's your, we take 25%, so here's your 75 cents. You gotta take off the HST. You can't collect it from the customer, so you have to take that off your bottom line as well. Of course, no one does, right? Scott, 
you know, I'd be interested to know, you know, what is the, what is the impact that's happening to your drivers, right, to your employees, and and to the taxi drivers in general, because of Uber. Yeah, and if you can uh, if you can uh, answer that in in about thirty seconds, we'll right. be all set. Well, I mean, our drivers are losing income. Yeah. Right. So we're losing um, we're losing some part time people that were good people that were in the industry that can't make a living. Right. They can't. They you know they're they're struggling. You know, the cab drivers don't make great money anyways, right? So, but, you know, they did okay. And now there's people that work for me for 35 years, right, that are now saying, well, I gotta get it, I gotta find something else to do for the next, you know, 10 years of their working here, whatever they have left, because there's just not enough money in it for them. We were slowly losing business to them. Now, don't get me wrong, we still have business and we're doing fine in that sense, but we're just losing. But over time, you lose a little bit of market share as it goes goes yeah. and goes. So, okay. Well, you know, uh, it, it, I, I appreciate you uh, you being here to to give us some insight, uh, particularly into the uh, the tax uh, uh, ramifications of, of Uber not uh, not paying that tax. So I want to thank you so much well, for uh, for being sure. here. Thank you, Scott. Thank and you for it. uh, uh, it's. It, it's interesting, and I'm a little surprised that we didn't have more phone calls. But mm, uh, uh, we're going to take a break.